Acts 23 on denominational doctrine. You know, the Bible teaches that God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. You know, it's not just good enough to have the right frame of mind. That is, I want to worship God. That's wonderful. That is part of it. But that's not all of it. You've got to also, I must also, worship God in harmony with truth. Now, the only way, friends, that we can do that is to glean that truth from the inspired, inerrant, perfect will of God. This means that God directs our worship. I go to the Bible. You must go to the Bible. All men must go to the Bible to find out what God would have us to do when it comes to worship. However, all men will not allow God to speak on this subject. All men will not allow God to have his way. Therefore, there are false doctrines relative to worship. We want to look at some false doctrines on worship. Number one, instrumental music. There are those who employ the use of instrumental music in worship to God. Now, when we say instrumental music, we're talking about mechanical instruments, such as the piano, the guitar, the organ, drums, tambourines, whatever. This is what's under consideration. Now, what we want to know is where in the Bible, New Testament, does the New Testament authorize the use of mechanical instruments of music? We contend that such is not there. Over and over again, on our radio program, also in home Bible studies, we ask people in love and kindness, where would you find instrumental music in the New Testament? Where will you read about Paul, Silas, or some New Testament church using instrumental music? Where is it? Do you realize that one after another, including denominational preachers, have admitted it's not in the Bible? You won't find it. You mean it's not in there? No, it's not in there. They will admit it, but they try to justify it. Well, how do they try to justify it? That's what we want to look at for a few moments, various ways that men try to justify the use of instrumental music and show what's wrong with their argumentation. Number one, they'll say, well, it's an aid. Well, what do you mean it's aid? Well, it just helps me do what God wants me to do. And really, that's what an aid does. Now, if it was a legitimate aid, that's all right. But we contend it's not an aid, but rather it is an addition to God's Word and therefore sinful. Right now in the studio, we have lights. And these lights, they're aids. You know, I might have trouble uh, turning through my Bible and seeing what I need to read if I did not have lights. And you, you'd have trouble seeing me if suddenly it went dark in here. We need lights. This table, it's an aid. This podium, I can lay my Bible on it. But the bottom line is, when we get through, the lights help me. This podium helps me. But if I want to read a verse, then the bottom line is, all I've done is given to you the Word of God. We've not added anything to the Bible. So then the lights are an aid. I was studying with a man one time, and he said, I'll tell you what, preacher. How about you finding lights in the Word of God, and I'll find you the piano. I said, well, I don't have to do that. I said, to start with, you and I both know that lights simply aid us in the reading of God's Word. Do you not realize that? He said, sure. I said, well, then I don't have to find it. He said, oh, yeah. You find the lights in God's Word where they use lights, I'll find the piano. And again, I told him, I don't have to do that. You know, all the time, I knew where the lights were. And I said, all right, if I find you lights 
where they had lights, in worship, in the Word of God, will you find me the piano? He said, I told you I would. I said, well, look at Acts 20, verse number 8. Here the Bible says, and there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And that follows verse 7, where they worship God by partaking of the Lord's Supper and the preaching of God's Word. They had lights. But all those lights did was simply aid in the worship. That's all. Not in addition. I said, there, there are your lights. Now, where's the piano? He said, uh, 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 well, I knew he couldn't find it. I said, sir, now look, if you're going to be honest, God wants to be worshipped in spirit and truth. Now, where is the piano? Where is instrumental music? You said you'd produce it. Well, I knew he couldn't. Let us notice briefly some differences here between an aid, uh, an addition, and so forth. For instance, God told Noah, build the ark out of gopher wood in Genesis 6:14. Well, now, if we're talking about aids, we're talking about things like hammers, saws, things along that line that would have assisted him in building the ark. Now, here's a hammer. Here's a saw. And here's maybe a square to square things up. Now, lay all those aside when he gets through. And what has he done? He has simply built an ark out of gopher wood. He has added nothing. Absolutely nothing. Those were aids. But now, if he'd have gone up somewhere and got him some cedar and got some oak and pine, other kinds of wood, then he would have added to what God Almighty would have said and thus would have been displeasing to God. See, when you mention a kind, for instance, go for wood, that includes that kind, and it excludes all other kinds. You've got to understand that. For instance, if I were going to tell you, paint this room here and paint it white, then that includes white, and it excludes all other colors. If I tell you to put wood in here, and I tell you to put uh, pine, that includes pine and excludes all other woods. That's a principle in how to ascertain authority. See, it's that which has been authorized, including that and excluding everything else. Well, the same way in 2 Kings 5, in verse number 10, Elisha sent a messenger out and told Naaman, go wash in the Jordan River seven times, and you'll get rid of that old leprosy. Now, what about AIDS? Well, he could have used his chariot to have gotten down to the Jordan River, that would have simply been an aid. He could have ridden a donkey down to the Jordan River. He could have walked. You know, all of these are simply aids. And then if he'd have done what Elisha told him to do, dip seven times in the Jordan River, then he would have been obedient to the commandment of God. But now watch here as we ponder some additions, and he pondered these. He said, are not Abana and Farfar rivers in Damascus better than the old muddy Jordan? Well, maybe so. But the man of God did not say go dip in Abana. He said go dip in the Jordan River. Now when the man of God said the Jordan River, that included the Jordan River, and it excluded all other rivers upon the face of the earth. That's the way it is when it comes to worship. When God tells you the way he wants to be worshipped, that includes that and excludes everything else. If God says sing, he means sing. If God says play a piano, he means play a piano. But now God didn't say play a piano. God said sing, Ephesians 5, 19, and a host of other verses. Well, same way with the Lord's Supper. When you read about the Lord's Supper in the New Testament, say verses Matthew 26, 26 through 27, and other verses, you'll find that God said that we are to use the bread and the fruit of the vine in order to remember the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, when we think about AIDS, what would aid me in doing this? 
Well, friends, if you got the fruit of the vine, you're going to have to have something to put it in. You can't just have grape juice, you know, even if you hold it in your hands. That's still an aid. If I could hold the fruit of the vine in my hands so that it would not leak out and went around and let people partake of that, my hands would still be an aid. Same way with the bread, if I held it in my hand, my hand would be an aid. But still yet, when the people got through, all they would have done would be simply take the bread and the fruit of the vine as commanded by the Lord. Now, we use cups to hold the fruit of the vine. That's an aid. We use plates to put the bread in so we can be clean. That's an aid. And when we get through, all we have done is take the bread and the fruit of the vine. No addition whatsoever. But now, maybe someone comes along and says, well, I love hamburgers and Pepsi Cola. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use hamburgers and Pepsi Cola on the Lord's table. No, you can't do that. Those are additions to the Word of God. You've changed it. And so it is with instrumental music. God says, sing. And when somebody puts a piano in there, that is an addition. Well, same way with prayer. You know, the Bible says that we're to pray, and we're to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. John 16, 23. Well, what could be a, an aid in doing this? Well, I might feel more comfortable when I pray if I look to heaven. That might be an aid. But see, after I get through, all I've done is look toward heaven and pray to the Father in harmony with his will through Jesus Christ, and I've accomplished what God wants me to do. Or I might want to kneel. Or it might be if I get up at 5 o'clock of the morning that that's when I want to pray, at least one of the times, and I feel this will aid me because I want to pray before I leave the home. But think about some additions. The Catholic Church has come up with the concept that people can pray to Mary because if Mary is the mother of Jesus, and she is, then if Jesus can be influenced, certainly it would be by his mother. So why not talk to his mother so his mother can go over and influence Jesus? Now, you know what's wrong with that? No Bible authority. No Bible authority for it at all. Others believe, Catholic Church and others believe, you can pray to various saints. Again, this is an addition to God's Word. And we're trying to eliminate additions. We want to do only what the Word of God says so that we can worship God in spirit and in truth. Now, Ephesians 5, 19 says that we're to sing. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Well, if this is a song book, and I've got words here, and I sing these words, this book is an aid. And so then it helps me to recall the words. Now, if I can do it from memory, that's great. Or maybe it has some notes there that tells me when to go up, when to come down, when to hold it, how long to hold it, and all of this, that's simply an aid. When I get through, all I have done is to sing praises unto God. But now, if I choose to use a piano, then I've got two kinds of music. I've got vocal music, which is authorized singing, and then I've got mechanical music music, which is not authorized, namely the piano. And so then, friends, there's a difference between an aid and an addition. Well, they come along and say, well, I'll tell you why I use it. Found in the Old Testament. And, buddy, if it's in the Old Testament, it's good enough for me. Well, no, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to take everything that's in the Old Testament because it stands or falls together. Boy, think about this, folks, and I want you to... Don't forget this. When they say, I use it because it's in the Old Testament, that is a great admission. Don't you ever forget that. What admission are you talking about, Wesley? They admit implicitly they can't find it 
in the New Testament because they got to run to the Old Testament to try to find it. Now that's quite an admission within itself. Not only that, it's an admission on their part they need Bible authority. Why go to the Old Testament to try to find it? Because they feel the need to have Bible authority for it. And we appreciate them for that. I'll tell you this. When they run to the Old Testament, they're telling you something else, too. If God wanted instrumental music, he knows how to ask for it. In the Old Testament, it was authorized and commanded. And God knew just exactly how to ask for it. In Psalm 150, beginning with verse number 3, Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. See, God knows how to ask for it. Then he goes on to say, Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Wait a minute, God. What are you saying in the Old Testament? God is saying... Worship me using these instruments of music. So I know he knows how to ask for it if he wants it. Well, since I know that he knows how to ask for it if he wants it, then surely it'll be in the New Testament if he wants it. That's exactly right. But you can read your Bible from Matthew to the very last chapter, Revelation 22, last verse, and you will not find where any inspired man commanded the use of mechanical instruments of music. And you will not find any New Testament church using mechanical instruments of music. Well, where did it come from, one might ask? It came from men. It did not come from God. Now, look, we have nothing against mechanical instruments of music. As a matter of fact, if you were talking about the Old Testament... I would tell you in a hurry, they're authorized. But now if you're talking about the New Testament, I'll tell you in a hurry, they're not authorized. Now how do I know that though? Because in the Old Testament, I read it to you a moment ago, they're commanded. But in the New Testament, you cannot read about the use of mechanical instruments of music. In Colossians 2, 14, beginning, the Bible says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Did you get it? The old law has been nailed to the cross. These laws are not binding upon anyone. So then we're under a new law. So then if we're going to worship God in spirit and in truth, we've got to find out what the new law says. Galatians 5, 4 says, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. If you go back under the law to try to justify your practice, the Bible says you fall from grace. So you don't want to fall from grace, so then you've got to stay in the New Testament to find out what God wants you to do for this age, for this time. Well, another argument they use is the solo argument. They say, well, the reason I use instrumental music is because it's found in the word solo. They think this proves their case. The word originally did mean pluck, twitch, twang, and did at times mean the use of instrumental music. For instance, you might not believe this, but, you know, you could solo a hair up here. There's not much up there to solo. That means to pluck, twitch, twang. You can solo the strings of a guitar. You can solo a chalk line. That's what it meant. And since it was a twitching, since it was a twanging, a plucking, and so forth, then that word became synonymous with the use of playing instruments. But as the language evolved... And by the time we get to the New Testament, the word solo meant simply to sing. Nothing more, nothing less. Now let me read to you what some scholars have said about this. And in a debate 
with Jerry Hayes on instrumental music, I called upon him to produce any of the scholars that would show that in the New Testament that it was right to use the word solo with the concept of using instrumental music. Friends, it's not there. Listen to Thayer. In the New Testament, to sing a hymn, to celebrate the praises of God in song. Notice, not to play an instrument. In vines, it says, in the New Testament, to sing a hymn, to sing praise. Green, in the New Testament, to sing praises. Abbott and Smith, in the New Testament, to sing a hymn, sing praise. The analytical Greek lexicon. Notice it says in the New Testament, to sing praises. Molten and Milligan, in the New Testament, as in James 5, 13, sing a hymn. Do you get the point, friends, over and over and over again? The scholars say this word in the New Testament times simply meant to sing nothing more, nothing less. The word solo is found five times in the New Testament. It is translated sing three times, sing psalms once, and make melody once. If solo means to sing and play, then every Christian is commanded to sing and play because every Christian is commanded to solo. Think about that, folks. You can't solo for me. God tells me to solo. And if it means to play an instrument, you know, a piano, a guitar, or whatever, I've got to do it. Friends, I can't play an instrument. I can't even play a radio unless I cause it to static. I don't have that ability. But now God tells us to sing. Hey, I don't even have to sing good. I don't have to be able to carry a tune. But I am to sing. Now, if solo includes the mechanical uh, instruments of music, the 47 Greek and Hebrew scholars who produced the King James Version of the Bible were all wrong. Now you just think about it. Here you got 47 of the world's richest scholars translating the Word of God, and when they come to the New Testament and they see that word solo, they know what it meant in the first century. They've done their homework and they translated it, sing, make melody, and so forth. Now, not only that, if solo means to play an instrument, the 101 scholars who produced the American Standard Version of the Bible were all wrong. When I debated Jerry Hayes, I took version after version after version of the Bible. I had a huge chart of nothing but versions of the Bible. And I showed how they translated the word solo. And even some of these versions, most of these versions, I wouldn't even endorse. But they got it right. Sing, play, uh, sing, make melody and so forth, but not play. Not play. I asked him, where is the one that says play? Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm sure you can find some out there, the way people are perverting the word of God with translations, that probably say play. But now... It's not correctly translated. And if they do find one that says play, guess who's got to play? Everybody. Not somebody designated to go up on the stage up there and play the piano for you and for me. So the Greek word solo does not help them. Number four, I want you to notice another argument. They say, well, I use instrumental music because they used instrumental music in the temple. Well, they got to prove that to start with. Now, we grant that instrumental music was authorized in the Old Testament. No problem with that at all. But now, friends, are they going to do everything that took place in the temple area? Now, when Jerry Hayes made this argument, it was in the temple, therefore it's good enough for me. What about the animal sacrifices? What about the burning of incense? What about the showbread? What about all these other things? How many things are you going to take from the temple? Well, see, he didn't want anything from the temple except instrumental music. Well, friends, it makes no difference what they did in the Old Testament. I don't care if they had a drum sitting back there on the mercy seat. That doesn't authorize it for the New Testament. Not at all. 
The only way you and I can find out how to worship God in spirit and truth in this day and time is go to the New Testament, the Word of God. And then we can find out what God would have us do. Then they use another argument. They say, well, I use instrumental music because I like it. Well, friends, are we going to go by our likes and our dislikes on how to worship God? Someone might like women preachers. Well, let's use women preachers. Others, they might like Pepsi Cola and hamburgers on the Lord's table. Well, let's do that then, if we're going to go by likes and dislikes. You know, the Bible did not say God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in their likes and their dislikes. No, they must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, notice they did not say, well, I use instrumental music because it's pleasing to God. He commanded it. No, they make the argument, I like it. I've heard it over and over and over again. Many of those who call the radio program say, we use it because we like it. It pleases us. Let me read you a verse. In Romans 15, 3, the Bible says, For even Christ pleased not himself. Now, Christ did not please himself. I don't have a right to please myself. Okay, Lord, what did you do? But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. I was willing to do your will, O Lord, even to the point of dying on the cross. Those reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. That's what Jesus said. I took them to Calvary's cross. He didn't come to please himself. He came to do the will of the Father. Friends, you and I must have that same mindset. We must have the attitude that we're going to do the will of the Father not the will of self, so it doesn't cut it and it doesn't get it, just to say, well, I like it. Notice some verses on the kind of music that God wants today. Look at all these verses, Matthew 26, 30, Mark 14, 26, Acts 16, 25, Romans 15, 9, James 5, 13, 1 Corinthians 14, 15, Ephesians 5, 19, Colossians 3, 16, Hebrews 2, 12, they all have one thing in common. You know what it is? Sing. God wants us to sing. None of those verses that you are viewing there say sing and play. Not a one of them. Now, friends, do you believe in Bible authority? I believe in Bible authority then we need to find Bible authority for the use of mechanical instruments of music. The Bible says, Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Let me read just a few of these verses right fast that authorizes singing. Notice, if you will, Ephesians 5:19, Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Not sing and play, singing. He, Hebrews 2.12 saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. Will I sing praise unto thee? In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee? In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee? Not sing and play. Now friends, we must help people see the truth on this. There is no Bible authority for the use of mechanical instruments of music. Well, another argument they use, there'll be instrumental music in heaven. Well, again, I want you to notice what a great admission this is. Why make the argument there'll be instrumental music in heaven? They're admitting they can't find it in the New Testament. Otherwise, why not just use the New Testament? Why not just show, look, they used it in the first century while well, the church at Corinth when they got together, they used instrumental music? No, they couldn't do that. Well, the church at Ephesus, they used instrumental music. No, they couldn't do that. Well, the church at Thessalonica, they used instrumental music. No, they can't do that. So then about the only thing they can do is say, well, they had it, and they will have it in heaven. 
Notice, friends, and we're going to grant something here for the sake of argument. They had it in the Old Testament, we know, and it was authorized, Psalm 150. All right, we'll grant them that. Now, for the sake of argument, even though we don't believe it, we're going to grant them that it's going to be in heaven. All right, it's in the Old Testament, and we're going to grant the argument that it's in heaven. Neither one of these happens to be the issue. The issue is not did they have it in the Old Testament. The issue is not will it be in heaven. The issue is where did anybody use it in the Lord's church on the face of the earth in the New Testament. They can't find it. See, this is the issue. The Old Testament is not our standard, and what is going to be true even in heaven is not our standard today. Friends, in heaven, the Bible makes the argument there's not going to be any marriage. Well, can I go home and say, now, look, hon, heaven is my standard. There's not going to be any marriage in heaven, and from now on, you can forget it. We're not married. Friends, I'd be violating the law of God. The law of God says that my wife and I are married, and that what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And so then I'm under a God-given obligation to honor that. In heaven, they're going to be little babies. Shall we say, all right, what we're going to do, since there's little babies in heaven, we're going to have infant membership in the Lord's church because, brother, if it's good enough for heaven, it's good enough for me. No, listen. We have a standard here on earth. And that standard is the New Testament. It's our pattern. We must go by the pattern. Do all things according to the pattern. Now, where in the world can they read in the New Testament where the New Testament church used instrumental music? It's not there. They know it, and I know it. Well, I want you to notice another argument they make. They say, well, it doesn't say not to use it. And if it doesn't say not to use it, I'm going to use it. Well, it does say not to use it, folks. It sure does. Now, let's go back to the concept of authority, okay? You've got to understand it. I walk into a store, let's just say a McDonald's, and I say, give me a Big Mac. And she comes up with chicken McNuggets. I say, hey, look, I didn't order chicken McNuggets. I don't want them. And I say, give me a, a Diet Coke. And she gives me a mellow yellow. I say, I, I didn't order that. And she looks at me and says, now listen, sir, let's not be playing games. You did not say not to give you these things, did you? Well, no, I didn't. Well, then, don't be griping. Because you did not say not to. So I'm going to give you these things. Listen, the concept of authority is this, that when I, if I have the authority, ask for something, that's all that that includes. If you're going to paint this room, and I say, look, paint it white, that includes white and excludes all other colors. Now watch God. God says, don't add to, don't take from my word. Revelation 22, 18 and 19. And then over and over and over and over again in the New Testament, he says, sing. What do you think he means? He says, sing. We used to play a little game called Simon Says. And you could only do what Simon said or you're out of the game. If Simon says, sing, you had to sing. If Simon said, jump up and down on one foot, you had to do that. Now, if, I say, if someone should say, jump up and down on one foot, you're out if Simons didn't say it. Why? Because you added to what he said. Well, that's the way it is with God. You and I don't have a right to add to nor take from the Word of God. And so when God says sing, he means sing. Well, their argument is, it doesn't say not to, so I can do it. Well, it doesn't say not to baptize little babies. Is that okay? It doesn't say not to shoot pool in worship. Maybe someone likes to shoot pool, and they say, you know, I can do this to the glory of God. And so they shoot pool in worship. I read an article, and I got it in my office, where they had a belly dancer come to a congregation, a denomination, and do all this belly dancing. They interviewed the members and said, well, how do you like it? The men loved it. But now the ladies didn't like it all that much. 
Well, it didn't say not to have a belly dancer. So I guess that's okay. No, it's not okay. That's not authorized at all. Same way with the Lord's Supper. Well, it doesn't say not to use Pepsi-Cola and hamburgers, so let's just have Pepsi-Cola and hamburgers from now on. By the way, when people call the Arise to Truth radio program and they make this argument, it doesn't say not to. I bring up the Lord's Supper and I say, is it okay if I use Pepsi-Cola and hamburgers? Why, no, you can't pervert the Lord's Supper like that. Then I make their argument and say, well, it didn't say not to. They can see that. It amazes me how they can see it with the Lord's Supper, but they cannot see it on the kind of music that God has authorized. Well, here's a letter. This letter is addressed to me. Well, when the mailman gets it, he said, I wonder where I ought to leave it. Because it doesn't say not to give it to Susie Bell Snodgrass. It does not say not to give it to John Doe. Friends, when that has my name on it, my address, my zip code, that includes me and excludes all other people. That's the way a thing is authorized. Watch God make this argument. In Hebrews 7, 14, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Notice, Moses didn't say anything about those in Judah being authorized to be priests. Now, given what some people would say, well, it didn't say that Christ couldn't be a priest or somebody from the tribe of Judah couldn't be a priest. Well, it did, because Moses didn't say anything about it. Therefore, it's not authorized. Well, there's a difference between specific and generic commandments. Go ye therefore into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Now, it's specific what we've got to preach, the gospel. Generic on how we go. We can ride a horse, fly by way of plane, or whatever. We can do it any way we so desire. As long, my friends, as we do what God asked us to do and not add to it or take from it. Same way we use the case of Noah building the ark. Gopher wood is specific. Now, if he had just said wood, built it out of wood, then he could have chosen the wood that he wanted. Same way with Naaman. He said dip seven times in the Jordan. If he had just said go dip in water, he could have chosen the place. Same way with the Lord's Supper. He said fruit of the vine, unleavened bread. If he had just said eat and drink, you could have chosen whatever you wanted to eat, whatever you wanted to drink. Now, instrumental music or the, uh, the kind of music God wants. He said sing. Now, if he had just said make music, then we could have made any kind of music that we would have wanted to have made. Well, now listen, friends. It's a matter of Bible authority. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. i got a lot, of, a lot of other material here, quotes even from denominational people and so forth on instrumental music showing they were opposed to it. I've got some good questions I used in a public debate. Study those, and I believe they'll be very helpful to you. Thank you for being with us. Please join us next time.